Attends, nickel. <rire> ah, il s'est arraché la Oui. Ok. Ok, Gaël. Hello. First thing to say is that I am very nervous. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about my English as well. Because I haven't been practicing it uh, for months. So uh, I don't know. Let's see. And uh, my name is Alessia Cannata. I am a third and hopefully last year PhD student in bioengineering from the University of Pavia in Italy. And uh, I'm here to present my whole research project. I'm sorry also about my trembling voice. It's the first time I'm carrying out a seminar. Sorry. And uh, so if I try to entitle my whole project uh, like this. So microwave and emitter wave uh, medical imaging development of the system from the pentons to the imaging algorithms. Um, I come from Pavia, which is a city uh, in the north of Italy, which is close to Milano. We have uh, one of the oldest universities in the world. The city is very small, but uh, it's very lively and it's nice. And Samir uh, has been there and confirmed. And this is my work team. I'm working. Uh, in uh, two labs. So I have two uh, supervisors. One of them is Marco Pazian, which is associate professor at Microwave Lab. The other one is Giulia Matrone, which is associate professor um, at the Bioengineering Lab. And uh, Simona Di Meo is uh, my co-supervisor. I tried to get uh, the main topics of my research here in the list. So uh, microwave and millimeter wave imaging, multimodal phantoms characterization, signal processing, and uh, imaging algorithms. Okay, so now we can skip to the uh, actual presentation. presentation. I will uh, start from a brief introduction of the problems who motivated my research at the beginning. So the first of them, is the breast cancer, which is um, one of the main causes of the death about women in uh, the whole world. And uh, currently, the um, imaging method that are used in clinical practice to detect the breast cancer are the, uh, the X-ray mammography and the ultrasound imaging. I'm sorry, I have to drink. <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, uh, so we have uh, X-ray mammography, of course, and, uh, and US echography, which have, have both, uh, of course, as everything, limitations. But these limitations can be overcome uh, by using new systems based on uh, microwave and millimeter wave imaging, which can provide uh, um, many advantages. First of all, the use of non-ionizing radiations. So, uh, we are working in this case at low, lower frequencies that, than the X-rays. Uh, as you know, I think you know, the X-rays are ionizing, so they may cause uh, damage to the tissue. And uh, the second point is that uh, these novel techniques are meant to be non-invasive. So, for example, the X-ray mammography requires the um, compression of the breast, which is uh, uh, sometimes not tolerable by the women. So a woman randomly decides not to go to the screening test because it is uh, annoying. And uh, a, techni um, a technical uh, advan advantage of this uh, technique uh, is that uh, it, can provide, uh, it can provide a very good contrast between the healthy tissues and the tumor ones due to the uh, water content of them, we will see it later. And last but not least, the uh, resources uh, that are meant to be employed are very low cost. In this context, uh, it is fundamental to test and develop uh, these new 
techniques using, using not using, uh, by carrying out uh, um, experimental campaigns based on ex vivo samples or better in vivo patients. It is not always uh, possible, so we um, go for the use of uh, phantoms. I don't know if you know what a phantom is, but we will see it later. And uh, hopefully, in the future, we can exploit the potential of multimodal medical imaging. So, for example, in an ideal world, we can use a technique which can provide different physical information about the same tissue at the same time. So, for example, in the future, we can have a scanner which can uh, investigate uh, like the dilatory properties of the tissue, so the complex permittivity, but even the um, Young's modulus, so the stiffness, and so on, the US properties. This may increase the, um, the accuracy of our diagnosis, and uh, it, can, it can provide faster diagnosis as well. And uh, during the presentation, I will try uh, to explain to you how I worked uh, with the multimodal phantoms in order to develop uh, such uh, techniques. Okay, the second problem uh, which uh, justifies my research is another disease, two other diseases, bone diseases like osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, which uh, affect the quality of life of millions of people. And, uh, even in this case, the uh, most common uh, technique to diagnose this uh, disease is the dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. So, again, X-rays, again, uh, ionizing radiations, again, disadvantage. And so, even in this case, microwave and millimeter wave imaging uh, uh, can help. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Let's see something technical. Uh, so if we have a system based on antennas, we can reconstruct the image uh, with two, two, uh, <laughs> through two approaches. The first one is the radar approach and the second one is the tomographic approach. Through the first one, which is the uh, easier, um, we can retrieve an incomplete map of our field of view. So we have antennas, we do the measurements, we can measure the time of flight of the signals, and uh, we know, of course, the um, speed of propagation of the electromagnetic wave through our medium, which is the air or the tissue, and we can retrieve its position, and of course, its presence. Uh, the tomographic approach instead uh, helps us to uh, retrieve the presence, the position, but also the properties of a target, of something, of a tissue, of an object. It requires uh, an higher computational effort, it is more time consuming, and it is even based on a nil post mathematical problem, so it is a mess, <laughs> but uh, um, it is more accurate. We will see later. Do you know the difference between these two approaches? Do you have a... No? Okay. But you... <laughs> Am I clear? I mean, radar uh, means time, velocity, and so um, position. And the other one... No. <laughs> the other one requires uh, millions of mathematical problems. Okay. Let's go to the phantoms production. Okay, now, <laughs> uh, so you told me you know what is a phantom, okay, so I asked the to our best friend, <laughs> okay, and ChatGPT replied that a phantom, a tissue mimicking phantom, is an object, in my case it is an handmade material, which is designed, which is created, uh, a doc uh, um, in order to uh, simulate uh, the properties of something, of a tissue, of an organ. So in my case, at the very first uh, stage of my project, 
I wanted my phantoms to mimic the dielectric properties of uh, the breast of the breast tissues. So, so at the beginning, uh, in my lab, I developed different mixtures based on the use of uh, non-toxic, cheap and uh, very easy to handle ingredients, as you can see in the table, the ionized water, gelatin, sunflower oil and dishwashing liquid, you can find them at the store easily. And uh, we wanted them to reproduce the um, dielectric properties, so the complex permittivity of the uh, breasted human breast tissues the malignant one, but even the healthy ones. We decided to split the uh, LT category into three subgroups uh, uh, according to their water content, because um, the dielectro properties of the, breast, the human breast tissues may vary uh, a lot, so uh, it will be convenient to split them into subcategories. So, sorry. These are the ingredients, and this is a, a photo of the production, so it is very easy to, product, to, to, to produce them. And uh, when the procedure to obtain phantoms is well established, we went to the uh, production of multi-layer phantoms. So, as you can see, they are jelly materials, no big deal. And um, we, we developed uh, multi-layer phantoms in a linear configuration or hemispherical conformal pink configuration with a cup uh, for the fruits. And um, we saw that it is possible to construct them by properly uh, pouring and cooling the mixtures. And uh, they show good results even in the characterization. So some samples can be saved from uh, this entire phantom and uh, go to the characterization and uh, the results are good, but we will see it later. So let's go to the multimodal characterization of these uh, jelly materials. The first one uh, is the dielectric characterization. Mm, sorry, I need to drink. drink. When I am at the conferences, I'm even worse. <laughs> um, so it is fundamental to do the characterization of such materials because only through the characterization we can define their properties, and only after defining that those uh, we can undergo imaging purposes. So at first. We wanted to dielectrically characterize our phantom, so we need this kind of uh, experimental setup based on an open-ended coaxial probe, uh, a coaxial cable which is uh, can connected to the DNA, which is the vector network analyzer. Do you know it? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, who can generate the stimulus and um, yeah, in a desired frequency range, of course, according to its uh, limit. And uh, the phantom is uh, positioned uh, in contact with the probe, avoiding any air bubbles which can affect the measurements. Uh, we use a mechanical mover to position the phantom in the right way, and we have also a mechanical uh, positioner for, uh, uh, for the probe to keep it uh, stable. And the system needs a calibration, which is uh, carried out uh, uh, often with uh, three known loads, uh, air, water, and short circle. So we basically know the, the dielectric parameters, uh, properties of these uh, materials, and we measure them in order to get more reliable measurements from our materials. And uh, the outcome of this kind of um, Characterization is the uh, dielectric permittivity, so we are interested in determining the real part and the imaginary part of uh, uh, such parameter. Uh, in a desired frequency range, I usually work up to 50 GHz, so up to the millimeter wave range. 
starting from 500 megahertz, which is the lower limit of my DNA. Okay, it is fundamental to check on the temperature of our phantom because it is a parameter which is known, it's known that it affects the measurements and uh, also we uh, usually take different measurements on the same sample at different depths, different positions, in order to get more reliable uh, results. And uh, here I reported also whole cool and the bi models, I don't know if you know them, they are mathematical models that uh, can retrieve the dielectric behavior of a material, random, random material, uh, at the desired frequency. I give you an example. My DNA works up to 20 gigahertz, but I want to know the, make the dielectric behavior of that material at uh, up to 60 gigahertz. I will use a cool core or a device model. Okay. These are um, some, yes, a summary of the results, and uh, all the mixtures uh, revealed to be compliant with the ex vivo references. I also try to extract the cold cool parameters in order to compare them to the corresponding uh, to the ones of the corresponding ex vivo breast tissues. And at the, end, at the end of the day, I uh, can say that me, but even in my lab, we are satisfied with these materials in terms of dielectric characterization because it was relatively easy to get the desired properties by adjusting uh, the, um, the ingredients in the mixtures. And this is, this is the dielectric characterization. Second point, here I want you Okay, so, okay, I produced the material, okay, I characterized them from a dielectric point of view, okay. Now I want to um, make them by model, so I want them to reproduce at the same time even the mechanical properties of the breast tissue. Okay, so we went to the mechanical characterization. The mechanical characterization is uh, usually uh, performed by uh, this uh, uh, electromechanical press, which uh, um, does an uniaxial unconfined compression on the phantom. We have so these metallic plates, the one which is below is fixed, the one which is above is movable. The, the phantom is uh, positioned uh, in contact with the fixed one and we want to compress it, okay, and uh, why, okay, why, because we want to extract its young, Young's modulus, okay, which is the measurements of the stiffness of the material, and why are we interested in the stiffness, well, because the stiffness, the hardness of a material is related to the, um, the, 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 health condition of the tissue. So, for example, a tumor of breast tissue is harder than a, a fat uh, adipose uh, healthy breast tissue. Okay, so uh, to get the Young's modulus, which is the first derivative uh, of the stress uh, as a function of the strain, okay, we have to calculate the stress and the strain. So the stress is the force applied to the sample divided by the area of the sample. And the strain is uh, um, the um, percentage shortening of the sample. We normally calculate the Young's modulus at 5% uh, of strain. So very small compression. Okay, in this... Uh, um, kind of characterization, we can set the experimental condition of the preload and test bit. Okay, no big deal. Um, but we maintain low, low test speed up to 2 mm per minute. Why? Because when we are going to uh, a screening test for our breast, obviously we don't want to break the tissue. Okay, so we <laughs> apply very small uh, speed uh, compression and uh, okay 
One of the advantages in using the phantoms is that we can set the standardized shape and dimension of the sample, which is not possible in ex vivo context. We can't cut the samples out. I, I don't know. We can't. But uh, with the phantoms, it's possible. I don't know. I'm not a, a magician. And uh, okay, as I told you, we are interested in, a in the linear response of the material. So we don't want to break the sample, we don't want to break the tissue, and that's it. Here I report to you the combination of the preload and test pit that, that we use. Okay, this is the result, the, a normal result of uh, the mechanical characterization. So we have this curve um, showing the stress of the sample as a function of the strain. The red curve Okay, which has uh, higher values, is related to a uh, tumor phantom. The other one is related to an empty phantom. So, as, expe as expected, the uh, tumor one has higher mechanical properties, so it's harder. Okay. Um, it, is, um, it is worth noticing that uh, many papers Many papers in the literature, they don't report uh, the young malus of blah, 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 no. They, they better say like, this tissue is uh, six times harder than this one. So we, are, we were interested in calculating the mechanical contrast um, between the tissues. Uh, and so we, we did the same with our phantom by varying the combination. So, uh, the, the tumor versus the fibroglandular, the tumor versus the fat, the tumor versus blah, blah, blah. Even in this case, we made different investigations. So, for example, the influence of the preload was evaluated, but uh, the influence of the test speed as well. And we investigated even the influence of the type and the percentage content of solid alpha solidifying agent. So, as anyone can imagine, if we increase the uh, percentage of the gelatin, we get harder materials. And um, if we change the, uh, the <laughs> solidifying agent, <laughs> we, can, we, can, uh, we can get uh, uh, more satisfying results. So by changing uh, the gelatin with the agar, we get uh, higher young models and so on. So basically, the take home message is that we can design properly uh, the, the material in order to get the desired properties. Okay, let's go to the acoustic characterization. We are interested in uh, determining the acoustic properties of a material because, uh, as I told you before, one of the uh, methods that are currently used for the breast cancer detection is the US remote, so ultrasound uh, echography. And so we, we are interested in how the ultrasound wave interferes with the uh, tissue, and so even in the phantom. Okay, for the acoustic characterization, we uh, use this kind of setup. Uh, in uh, reflection mode, it can be used also in transmission mode, but in the papers, uh, it's, I don't know, it's trendy to use the uh, reflection mode. And so we have uh, um, an ultrasound probe or ultrasound transducer, um, a ULA op system which can generate the stimulus as the VNA in the dielectric characterization. And uh, the ultrasound probe send uh, the uh, sinusoidal burst outside, uh, I mean, across the water, because the measurements are carried out uh, in water, because it's our, water is our reference medium. We know the speed of propagation of the ultrasound in the uh, water. And uh, the, um, the signal meets the metallic reflector, which is at the end of the water tank, which is then reflected back to the US probe. Uh, so it is this kind of reflection mode. The uh, approach is differential. So 
we take measurements without the phantom in place, and then we insert the phantom in order to see how the ultrasound uh, changes its propagation when inserting a new material. I have to drink. Sorry. <laughs> Am I good? Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, here I reported you some acquisition parameter settings, and uh, but I don't want to bother you with this pulse shape and duration, focal distance, time gain compensation. I don't know anything basically. Joking. <laughs> And uh, okay, the probe works with the uh, 24 active elements. So the yellow band that you see. Um, we are interesting in, interested in reconstruct a single line imaging uh, image. In, we don't want to make the imaging of the phantom, but um, only uh, we are interested only in, in uh, analyze the behavior of the signal. Okay, the properties of interest here are the um, speed of propagation of the sample, which uh, depends here, as in the radar uh, approach uh, in microwave imaging. Uh, we can measure the time of flight of the signal, we know the sample width, we know the uh, length of, of the path, so we can estimate the, um, the speed of propagation inside the phantom, and we also know the um, speed of propagation in water. Uh, even in this case, uh, we can set a standardized shape and dimension of the sample, which is not possible in the vivo context again. So we have to exploit uh, this uh, advantage in order to get, to get more reliable results from our measurements. Okay, as I told you before, at the very beginning of my PhD, I developed uh, this list of mixtures. Okay, I characterized electrically, I characterized mechanically, then I wanted to see if they are, if they were compliant with the corresponding SPO tissue, tissues, even for the acoustic properties. But I had to change something in the mixtures, which is okay. okay. So I added different powders, magnesium carbonate, glass bead, graphite, oil argon, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but <laughs> if I add graphite on my mixtures, I can mm, like uh, uh, adjusting the uh, acoustic parameters, which is okay, but I affect the dielectric parameter. So, uh, I had to do kind of trade-off uh, between the uh, addition of an ingredients and which properties I want to be compliant with. Uh, so at the end of the day, only two mixtures of the 11 original ones were compliant, were multimodal uh, from a dielectric, mechanical and acoustic point of view, which is good, I think. And uh, <laughs> this was uh, the first part of my PhD. Here I reported you some uh, images okay, of uh, some heterogeneous phantoms. So for example, the first one, this one, is the one that um, reproduces the realistic case, let's say. So when you, um, when you carry out a necrography on a breast which has a tumor, you see something like that. So the background is uh, fatty, is uh, very adipose and it is characterized by a speckled, speckled pattern, while the tumor uh, appears uh, at the ultrasound uh, black, very black, and it causes uh, um, a shadow cone be, be behind, behind, and uh, the other ones are not that no. <laughs> but the first one is good. Okay, let's go to the imaging, which is the most important part of my PhD. Mm. 
So after characterizing the properties, blah, 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 okay, we can go testing them uh, in a, some kind of imaging system. Okay, so in my lab, we wanted to develop an experimental setup for microwave and millimeter wave acquisition. Okay, so we created this structure, this hardware structure, by using like aluminum bars and anechoic panels and we um, we basically at the beginning wanted to uh, define a standard for the signal acquisition not the image on the signal and so we equipped the system with two antennas one uh, works as a transmitter and the other one as a receiver and we wanted to anal analyze the limitations of the system in order to uh, test at the very end of the project, a, fan, a phantom which is well established, uh, a linear phantom, a conformal phantom, a monolayer, multilayer, and so on. So this is the structure. It is uh, a cubic. Um, no, this is the what is it? Oh, this is the, the structure. Sorry, uh, cubic uh, shape, aluminium, which is uh, okay, um, equipped with the uh, anechoic panels. Uh, in order to shield the structure, in order to minimize the noise and to avoid interference. Okay, and this is the structure, and that's it. Then we wanted to investigate a radar approach for image reconstruction with the structure. So, as I told you before, in a radar approach, we want to retrieve the presence and the position of something. Okay, so we use a target which was a metallic plate. So we are working in the best case scenario because the metal causes very strong reflection. It is very visible at these frequencies. And okay, we like change. For example, we try the, uh, the metal here, 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 and so on. We change the position of the metallic plate in order to see if it, it is visible. And uh, okay, we wanted also to define the cross torque between the two antennas because they were very close, and uh, we want to um, quantify how they uh, interfere with each other. And the last but not least, of course, we wanted to analyze the multiple re multiple multiple reflection of the signal because our system is not uh, uh, perfect, of course and uh, the shielding is not perfect, the air is not perfect, and so on. Here I reported some uh, acquisition parameters, so the calibration band, which cover uh, up to uh, 44 gigahertz, so again, up to uh, the millimeter wave range. And this is uh, a normal uh, plot of the results of our signal. So, for example, uh, the first peak uh, is related to the cross torque uh, of the antenna. So, 18 point something centimeters is the uh, round trip, uh, yes, between the end of, of the transmitter and the end of the receiver and back. And the strongest one, 56, is the one related to the target, which is which was at 20.5 cm. So, uh, if you subtract the uh, offset uh, distance, let's say, you you get the that peak. These other peaks are the multiple reflection. And um, we wanted also to perform a background noise analysis. So, as I told you, we changed the, the position of the metallic plate, blah, 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 blah. And um, we also carried out measurements without any target. And we found out that uh, even in the worst case, so with the target, uh, with the metallic plate as far as possible from the antennas, we had a preservation of uh, uh, 45 dB on the background noise. I have to drink. <laughs> Good. 
And uh, so we can conclude that uh, um, this uh, um, first, uh, this early stage system is able to cover the, the whole uh, volume, the whole working volume. Okay. As I told you, this, there is an offset distance, so we try to increase the measurements precision by subtracting this uh, offset distance from the uh, measured distance, and we get uh, a good match between the expected distance and the actual one. And that's it for the radar approach that I developed in my lab. Stop. Then forget <laughs> everything. Okay. Now we are moving to the optimization of an algorithm for tomographic, so other side, tomographic imaging. Okay. This work has been entirely carried out in Ireland, in Galway, where I spent my abroad period last year. So, <laughs> first of all, I worked with the for the first time, tomographic imaging, not radar imaging. Second thing is that the uh, target biological tissue is changed, is no more the breast, but it is the wall. Okay, let me clarify. <laughs> when we deal with breast, we are searching for a target, the tumor, which can be present or not. So we are only interested in defining the presence. When we work with bone, we already have the tissues, of course. <laughs> we have the trabecular tissues, we have the cortical tissues and so on. And the osteoporosis or osteoarthritis uh, affect a tissue which is already present. So we want to determine the properties of that tissue in order to um, get a, a diagnosis or something like that. Okay, so I worked with the, um, these two uh, tomographic algorithms, which are the distorted born iterative method and the iterative method with adaptive thresholding for complex sense sensing. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you know, but the electromagnetic inverse scattering problem is inherently hill posed and nonlinear. Do you know it? No, I mean, sir. But that's it. <laughs> It is inherently ill posed because it has a no unique solution, because the number of measurements is less than the number of unknowns, and it is intrinsically non linear because uh, we have to determine many informations of our field of view and we have to correctly position the intensity of the pixel, blah blah blah, in the correct way, space, and blah blah blah. And, uh, this kind of process is not straightforward. It requires very, very high computational effort. And the, the combination of uh, these two methods allow us to um, it iteratively, iteratively update the forward solution of uh, the first method with the inverse solution of the other one in order to get the contrast function between the um, adjacent pixels and uh, in such a way we can position correctly uh, which point is uh, scattering and where and how much. Okay, so uh, at first I carried out uh, numerical investigations on uh, numerical phantoms. So in this case, the phantoms were not created uh, physically, they were numeric, numeric so they were matrix mat matrices in MATLAB. Okay, here we have um, this is a section of uh, the hill and uh, it is two layers. So we have the outside layer which is the cortical one and the inner layer which is the trabecular one. Okay. I tested this phantom into two different uh, um, Antenna, sorry, antenna configuration. So this one, which is circular, and this one, which is conformal. Okay, there is a matching medium, 
also, okay, which is the blue one. Okay, the dimension of the targets is, is the same, it's just the zoom that it is changing. But, uh, so, no, I'm sorry. Um, firstly, I worked on the analysis of the, on the influence of some parameters of the algorithm, like the threshold, the number of iteration, the central frequency of reconstruction. Here we see the reconstruction, right, uh, at one gigahertz. Uh, the target dimension, the number of antennas, blah, blah, blah. Here we have 16 antennas in the circular configuration. Here we have 24 antennas in the conformal hill shaped uh, uh, configuration. So I would say that the, at least the numerical reconstruction were satisfying, I would say. The target is correct in position. The properties are not perfect, but Still, they are visible, so I will conclude that it is okay. And uh, we wanted to make our model more complex, more realistic by adding the skin layer. The skin is, uh, of course, present in our body, okay? <laughs> and uh, it is very thin, so up to two millimeters. But uh, it uh, has very high pro dielectric properties, which can uh, um, affect uh, the reconstructions, uh, um, causing strong reflections. So we wanted to uh, determine uh, how the reconstructions vary um, according to the skin uh, thickness. And we found out that uh, up to two millimeters, uh, which is the actual uh, thickness of the skin, the, the, the reconstruction is working, then it gets worse. But uh, still, I think that uh, this method can be suitable for reconstructing, reconstructing uh, such quantum. Then, I wanted to test the same algorithm combination of algorithms, even in an experimental uh, context. So again, I developed uh, phantoms, but now they were liquid, not jelly. Okay, using water, Triton X and salt. Triton X is not uh, so non-toxic. <laughs> Uh, but still, uh, these materials are uh, very easy to manage and uh, uh, the liquid phantoms are even better than the other ones because they are reusable and they are uh, very stable in terms of uh, time. Um, these ones are the phantoms. So, uh, the characterization method was, was the same as the dielectric uh, one that I show you, uh, that we carry out in my lab. These are the properties, which are fine. And then, uh, this is the uh, imaging prototype. So we have this mold, this heel-shaped mold. We have these nine antennas, uh, which are meant to be in, uh, put in contact with the with the mold, so we don't have any matching medium now, so the conditions are uh, way different compared to the numerical one. Okay, uh, in this case the reconstruction has been, has been done at 3 gigahertz. Again, I try to optimize the methods by investigating some parameters. And, uh, okay, the molds, I tested two molds, so this one is BLA, and this one is carbon black. They are multi layers, so in these holes I, mm, I pour the liquids basically. Uh, the, so the trabecular, the cortical, the skin, the fat, blah blah blah. Okay, these are the reconstruction, and I'm kind of proud of those. <laughs> both in an LT case scenario and in, a, in the diseased one. In the osteoarthritic uh, um, case, you can see, okay, the osteoarthritic bone has a very high property, dielectric property, so as the skin, 
it causes uh, a very strong reflections, but still uh, we can again position uh, the target in the correct way and we can kind of extract the right properties. So I am feeling kind of proud of this work. Sorry. And uh, we are at the conclusion. I'm sorry for all of you. <laughs> The conclusion of this uh, presentation. So, to sum up, uh, we have seen that it is possible to produce uh, phantom uh, tissue mimicking phantom in order to mimic the desired physical properties. We saw that it is possible to adjust the properties by um, playing with the ingredients of the mixtures. We we see we have seen that the liquid phantoms are better. Okay, and um, okay. I in in my work I try to multi uh, to to characterize from a multimodal point of view some phantoms, but still the, there is the need of uh, specific guidelines in order to produce the phantom and characterize them. For example, for the mechanical characterization, there is not a standard. Uh, the acoustic one uh, as well, and uh, we have seen we have seen that there are two methods in order to uh, reconstruct the signals uh, collected by antennas, so radar or tomographic approach based on the kind of application, based on the um, medical uh, question, and. Uh, Last but not least, of course, I try to uh, start some experimental investigation, but uh, there is the need um, of uh, um, yeah, there is the need of no to investigate uh, such system with the ex vivo samples and uh, even in vivo patients, but still uh, this. Uh, system, these algorithms and these materials demonstrated to be suitable for these uh, kind of uh, techniques. And that's it. Wow. These are some references. And uh, I'm open for questions. And that's it. Okay. Yes, to uh, this episode, uh, it's doing for five minutes. I just want to see that you can understand how it's on. And also, she's also a PhD student, so she didn't have time, and she did it as well. So I think we can. of the jelly plate uh, phantoms? Is it something that you can uh, fabricate and store for a few months? It, no, 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 it depends. I mean, normally, no. If you store them like in air, no, just one day, two days at most. If you store them like in uh, uh, oil, you can use them for 10 days. Mm, about 10 days because the dielectric properties uh, don't change. But I have never tested the other ones, the mechanical ones, because I think uh, that if you store them in the oil, they, they become more uh, softer. So I, mm, I would not uh, test them in a mechanical, from a mechanical point of view. Uh, so, but no, uh, from a dietary point of view, you can use them uh, for 10 days uh, stored in oil. The liquid ones, instead, no, uh, they last uh, forever, I think. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's quite hard to uh, build a quantum. Well, I, I remember when I was in Tavia, uh, even uh, someone uh, from Spain came uh, yes. to do in order to understand uh, how we can manage to do that. So this is the difficulty of this of this work. Um, I have a question about um, your measurement with the nine antennas in yes. the DNA. Um, Picture there are a lot of uh, signal. Yes. Uh, so this is the the crosstalk between each uh, antennas. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't study antennas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, so I don't know actually because they are uh, like microstrip antennas, and I have never worked with microstrip antennas yes. up to that moment. So they told me like, okay, connect them, measure them. Okay. 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 I think that in the code there is something to um, in order to manage this uh, this problem, but uh, I don't know okay. actually. Because for me it's crazy to put like ten antennas. Uh, we are uh, with Simo, uh, antenna designer, and uh, I think I will be uh, shape the uh, mm -hmm. because I will uh, put uh, all my care off. Um, and just a final question. Um, I know that uh, you went abroad doing your PhD uh, for the students that are here. Uh, was it a nice experience or not? Yes. Uh... yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. No, no, no. If, um, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I've been in Ireland. Uh, it was very lively, very nice. Uh, but even the the lab, the, the people in the lab and the work in the lab was way different from where I come. So I enjoyed the the, the period. Uh, yes. No, no. I recommend it to do it. Yes. You say that, um, uh, just to conclude, you say that the theory is this kind of um, selected to be a uh, test on in the core or in the core. Do you think it's something that you do for the end of your PhD? No, no, I don't think so. But um, in Ireland, in Galway, where I went, uh, they, I mean, I went there because they had, they have. Uh, currently have a prototype uh, for breast cancer detection with microwave and so I went to visit uh, the, the lab, the, the device, uh, so they are uh, already uh, doing uh, these in vivo campaigns and uh, but in my case, I mean with my device I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I I will finish in September, so I don't think so. But uh, with the phantoms, of course, uh, and uh, I don't know, maybe in the future. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yes. So no more question. Okay, so. Je pense que ça aurait créé des vocations ou pas du tout ici. Euh...